What is going on, everyone? This is Andrew O'Connell with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. I'm also the director of research at Leduc Trading. It is December 16th, 2020. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this content, and I will continue to make it for you. Today, we're going to talk about the price action in the indices, the Fed meeting, the vol crush. We're going to go under the hood as we always do and check out those sectors and style factors some of the trades I took and things that are on my watch list. And last but not least, we will wrap up some options order flow. But before we jump in, quick risk disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan and do not YOLO your entire account into any one of my trades. So let's jump right into it. For our box scores for the indices, we have the S&P 500 up 0.16%. We had the Q's technology up 0.55%, the leader for today. We had the IWM small caps down 0.36%, and we had the Dow Jones down 0.16%. So we take a look at the action in the ES futures today. You know, this is the SPX we're looking at. You know, we had our really bullish run after the election. Ended up having a couple of days of pullback. And you can see yesterday we had you know, a nice bullish reversal candle closed towards the upper end of the day's range. And now today you can see we had a bit of a doji candle. And these Fed days, you never really know what to expect. You know, if Jerome Powell had come out and said the wrong thing, you know, we could have had a bit of a tumble. But I think overall he did a pretty good job. Um, I know when he comes into these conferences, he is one of his main goals is not to mess up the financial markets, not to mess up the stock market. And he was pretty he's gotten way better over time. He was pretty flawless in terms of, you know, his delivery, pretty much just saying we're going to continue massive monetary policy expansion until the Fed's goals are met. And we all know the Fed's goals are never really going to be met. Uh, but let me get off my soapbox about <laughs> the Fed. Basically, you know, it wasn't really, there was no like, negative reaction, nothing like that. So we just had a bit of a doji candle for today. Let's take a look at the cues. Yeah, I can go on all day about the Federal Reserve. <laughs> um, let's see, the cues, the NASDAQ also had a really strong day. You can see the NASDAQ actually made a, is this a new all-time high? Yeah, this is definitely a new swing high, and this is likely a new all-time high as well. Um, so really strong showing. You can see some of our, um, you know, essentially tech monopolies did really well today. Microsoft, you know, actually breaking, it looks like we reached up to the top of the monthly value area, and we closed just slightly above it. Amazon, which is one that I have a call spread on from a few days back. Oh, look at that in Amazon. So I have on, you know, as I discussed a couple days ago, I added it on this candle right here. I have the 3200, 3210 call spread for next week. So you can see we blasted through but the upper my upper strike and that call spread is fully in the money. You know, now I just have to make sure to manage it and land the plane safely. But this is definitely you know, a pretty good breakout candle on Amazon. So that was leading to a lot of the strength in the indices. Let's see, or at least in the, the NASDAQ. Let's see, Facebook. Facebook also positive on the day, just barely. This one is trading right around that point of control. And I believe Apple may have given some back as well. Yeah, Apple down 0.05% on the day, pretty much flat. I'm gonna keep watching this one. So yeah, we had a lot of strength in the queues. IWM, I actually added a hedge on an IWM this morning. The market is just moving so fast to the upside and it's been, you know, just a really bullish, you know, nice period in the markets. So I keep trying to think to myself, like, you know, I know this is gonna turn at some point, you know, with all these bullish positions that I'm adding. You know, I wanna make sure that I have some sort of downside hedge as well. So I bought the 190 strike um, January 15th puts um, and they're slightly out of the money. I believe they were like 35 Delta or something like that. 
and I really just want to have that one on in case there's any sort of you know meaningful volatility spike you know from now until January 15th I just want to have those on literally as an insurance policy hoping that you know they expire worthless but let's see uh, so IWM you know the lagger today the other thing that prompted me to add a hedge was it seems like this stimulus deal is pretty much done. It seems like, you know, any day now they're going to announce the passage of the deal. And the small caps and the cyclicals and the value stocks have been rallying on the prospects of that deal, you know, for quite some time now. And I was thinking about it to myself. And I'm like, once that deal gets passed, then there's not really as much you know, of a compelling reason to continue to bid up these small caps. So I figured, hey, let me just add a hedge there. So now for these sectors and style factors, let's dive right in. So we have, let me just pull this up so it's easier to see. We had these solar stocks actually take a bit of a break today, which is not, you know, the worst thing in the world. They had a multi-standard deviation day yesterday where they were up, you know, like that sector ETF is up about 8%. So you can see today down 0.92%. All of the ARC funds, except for the next gen internet, you know, down slightly as well. In terms of our laggards, in terms of momentum, we had KWeb actually up 0.96%. So I'll probably take a look at KWeb. Let's actually see what that one's doing. KWeb is one that I do like to trade. Yeah, this one looks pretty interesting. <laughs> This one looks similar to how Amazon looked the other day where you, know, you get a little bit of a bullish move above that point of control. So we'll see, I'll probably be watching this one. Let's see. Okay, so we had XLU utilities down 1.16%, still lagging. And the gold miners up 1.87%. So that is pretty interesting. Because the gold miners for so long, it was like every single day they were down. Now I'm starting to see, yeah, look at this. We're seeing a little bit of power in the gold miners. So that's also pretty interesting. And then if you take a look, our big winner for the day was YOLO, the cannabis sector ETF, up 2.91%. I actually added February calls to YOLO yesterday, if you remember from my recap video. I am still loaded up with my May calls, and I added some February as well. Um, just because I think this is, you know, one of the best trends that is currently, you know, happening in the market right now. And I sort of got lucky on those YOLO calls where I bought them yesterday, and then they announced the merger between Tilray and Afria, which are two of like the worst quality cannabis companies out there. Um, but it got the space going a little bit today. So you can see looking pretty nice. We actually auctioned down, you know, filled the gap from the morning and then buyers came in and pushed us up. So I do like YOLO here. Um, it's put in, put in a nice sideways consolidation and we'll see what it does. Now in terms of our style factors, we had high beta, which has been leading down 0.49%, closed well off the lows. We had the cyclicals down 0.63%. And then you can see in terms of our laggards, we had quality flat for the day and minval, you know, down slightly 0.03%. The best performers for the style factors were international momentum, which is kind of odd and growth so you can see like cyclicals and high beta you know are relative underperformers today so that's definitely something i want to continue to watch and just see as we get closer to the passage of this stimulus deal are the high beta and cyclicals actually going to start underperforming again so that's on my radar then for some trades and things on my watch list baidu is one where i closed out my calls you know, for about a 100% gain yesterday. And Baidu actually had some more power and kept going. And Baidu, I actually traded um, January calls in Baidu today. It was such a degenerate 
little day trade i held them for about like literally five minutes i bought the calls when baidu was at like 195 and i sold them when it went to maybe like 197 for like a quick buck and i held it for like five minutes so that's when you know like the market's just so hot like when i'm doing like little like degenerate day trades that's when you know it's hot but we'll see what baidu does because this is you can see yesterday we had the power we closed on the highs extended range candle today was more of a taking a break doji candle although it did close up 2.64 percent so baidu remains at the top of my watch list then we had amazon already talked about that i have my call spread on another one i took a target today in twitter i had the february calls closed out half my position because you can see twitter you know i bought those calls right on this candle right here you can see twitter had a nice gap up but then wasn't really getting much traction to the upside throughout the day closed lower than where it opened so i figured let me take a target here close that out for maybe like plus 36 or plus 40 percent um so that was a good trade you know then if we end up getting a dip in twitter you know, maybe I'll add and go back to a full position in those calls. So took a target there. This one, uh, Bridgetown Holdings, the SPAC I added yesterday. The worst thing imaginable happened. Um, you know, I was talking about, oh, they're going to do this acquisition of this company, Tokopedia. You know, it's an Indonesian e-commerce giant. And there was actually a headline this morning, a story saying, you know, Tokopedia, they're still exploring their options and no deal is set in stone whatsoever. So I was fully prepared for this SPAC to go from in the 13s all the way back down to 10. With this one, by the end of the day, it only dropped like 3.53%. 3, 3 so that is definitely interesting where even after, after the target, you know, we're still unsure about it. This one's still expensive. I think it might have to do something with the fact that i'm sure a lot of people including myself i didn't even know this spec existed you know before that headline yesterday about the merger and now it's like oh okay peter teal is backing this one like maybe i should just stay in it so that's exactly what i did and we'll see what happens when they do actually get their their merger candidate so we had that on iwm talked about that through on a an out of the money hedge um, Norwegian was one I put on yesterday. Didn't do all that much today. Let's see here. It was down for most of the day. Ended up closing up 0.95%. I have my January calls in Norwegian. Um, so we'll see what happens with that one as well. Up slightly on those. Nothing major. And then Sama remains one I continue to watch. This one's been such a roller coaster, so many shakeouts. We should be moving to our new ticker, you know, by the end of the week. I believe it's going to be CLVR for Sama. So I'm still holding my January calls, and we'll see what happens with this one. It's been a nice ride. I've been holding those calls from, you know, around like 10 and change. So we'll see what happens with Sama. Oh, yeah, and then the other trade I put on towards the close today i added lemonade and you can see lemonade has been on a complete tear had a bit of a pullback and now you can see you know nice extended range candle again today i purchased the 95 strike calls and i got them for like ten dollars and change so we'll see what this one does tomorrow but that would be pretty amazing if we revisited you know the prior swing high here at you know, like 111 and change so we'll see what happens with Lemonade. That about does it for you know the trades, things I'm watching, etc. I'll be doing some more research tonight. But you know, we're in the last two weeks of the year. We got two days until OPEX. So I'm just trying not to you know load myself up with too much risk and just be cognizant of everything that's going on. Oh yeah, another one. One more. So DKNG DraftKings, which is another one I have on. Shout out to Trevor. Trevor's got this one on as well. 
So this one, you guys all know I'm super bullish on DraftKings for the long term. I've been holding a position for a long time and I just trade around my position as well. I play it to the bullish side and I have the 50 strike February calls and those, you know, looked pretty nice today. I bought those calls on this shakeout candle here, which is really just a fake out. So I was like, oh man, my calls are underwater. And then they just came to life today. We got a nice little breakout candle above the monthly value area high, moving out of consolidation. So we'll have to see. There's a nice little gap over here that perhaps that gap could get filled. So I don't know. We'll have to see with DraftKings, but nice move in that one as well. Okay, so that does it for the trades and things I'm watching. Let's take a quick look at some options order flow. Yes, there were just, there's so many movers every day and so much going on. You know, nobody can get into every single one of these names, but it's nice to just catch, you know, catch a couple. So I have my filter on for, yep, $1 million and above. I am going to post my affiliate link for Cheddarflow in the description of this video if you're interested in doing a seven day free trial. This yeah so many calls came down so apparently everyone liked this jay powell press conference today because everyone is leaning bullish so we have some zoom calls going out to june zoom is not really one that interests me all that much let's see if what it did yeah so zoom who knows maybe it's got some like sleeper move in it but I just think as the vaccine gets administered, you know, people start going back to work. The story behind the stock is kind of broken, but I do think it's a great company. It's just super expensive. Baba, huh? Seeing some calls in June of 2022. Baba has been in a really bad downtrend. Hmm, looks like Baba seeing something a little different you can see it looks like the sellers just ran out of juice down there and you know a nice little day for baba okay yeah you can see it didn't you know it close it dipped below the monthly value area but now we're getting our little bounce and we're above the five day ema it's another one that sort of piques my interest even though it's like a counter trend trade, which I normally don't take. So we'll see, but that catches my eye. QS, another one we've been looking at, just disgustingly bullish. Um, Enphase, one of the solar names, that one's getting some call activity. Let's see Enphase really quick. There's just so many to go through today. Nice, nice follow through from Enphase. This one is definitely showing relative strength within solar. So I really like this one. And then of course, when it gets to here, I'm like, man, I just wish I could get a correction. So yeah, we'll see. That one looks really nice though. Um, TQQQ, so they're going for Qs. And then you can see, you know, like, uh, some Twitter activity, Slack, which I thought was pretty unique. So Slack is one where I played it with calls, and I got so lucky that they announced that you know there was there was the announcement of the takeover by Salesforce. That was one of my last you know live exits on Twitter before I joined Leduc Trading. And I think that's kind of interesting because the deal price for Slack is already set. I believe it's like $44.80 a share is the deal price. And you can see that since that price was announced, the stock is not really moving at all, which makes sense because if you know the deal is going to be consummated at a certain level, you're likely not going to buy Slack above that level. And people are probably going to bid up Slack when it's below that level. So you get this equilibrium. But it's weird that they bought those calls, you know, further out in time in Slack. So they must be you know, long-term slack bulls. Let's take a look. 
Boeing, we've got some activity. Boeing's been Boeing's been on a nice tear in that cyclicals and value category. Expedia. Expedia, I believe, was just kicked out of I believe it was the Nasdaq. I forget if it was the S&P 500 or the Nasdaq. But these are calls going out to 2022. Hmm. And it is just consolidating here. So that is kind of interesting. What strike did they buy? Sometimes I like to look for these where it's just consolidating and it hasn't made a move yet. 130 strike. They bought them at 1020 today. Okay, so they're just playing for the top end of that range. That's a nice trade. That's something that I would do. Yeah, because it's not too aggressive. Yeah, pretty interesting. So we'll have to see if they're accumulating it. I don't know. Expedia. I got a lot of things to add to my watch list. But yeah, that about does it for our options activity. There was a lot today. And that wraps up our market recap video. Thank you so much for tuning in. And I will speak with you all tomorrow.